what Taiwan exactly is, where it's located and how to reach this place, where to stay at this resort, should you bring your own gear? Are there any discounts for tourists? Stay tuned if you want to learn more about the best ever ski resort in South Korea. One is ski resorts and main part of them located pretty close to Seoul, just one hour by car. They are quite simple, they have very few slopes, they are pretty crowded. Taiwan located three hours by speed train from Seoul, which makes it less crowded, more picturesque with a very nice long and wide slopes. If you plan a huge tree for at least one week on ski resort, Haiwan is definitely worth a visit. Haiwan is located in a very majestic mountain area in the region which is called Jonsa. Johnson? Yeah, it's called like this. You can reach this place but a speed train, which is called ITX. Or you can uh, use a regular train that goes slower, about four to five hours, which is called Magungwa. I do recommend to take tickets uh, for ITX. Don't worry if you don't have a seats on your ticket. You can take any free seats before the owner appears. That's fine. In this country, you can do that. <laughs> so the train is very comfortable and you can bring your own food and enjoy it along the way with the very nice mountain views. This ski resort is located between two towns. One is called Sabuk and the second one is called Gohan. You can stay at three places. First, and I think it's the best option for you if you're about to make it serious, to go skiing or snowboarding, it's best to stay at skiing resort. But unfortunately, we had not that opportunity. All places at skiing resort were sold out two months prior our arrival there. <laughs> so we had two options, either stay at Gohan or at Sabuk. I checked all the places and the most comfortable one and very nice and cute I found in Sabuk. So very quiet and relaxing place. You won't meet a lot of people on the streets, which is so cool and nice for introverts like us. We lived at the 14th floor and we heard a river flowing, which was super good for sleep and just, just in general. We had a huge window with a mountain view. Everything was so smooth and relaxing. Hotel was very spacious and warm and pretty good. Not a lot of people stayed there. <laughs> We've been there on February. 2024. In Sabuk you can also enjoy a lot of traditional food. They have multiple places where you can enjoy it, but make sure to make it uh, up to 8 p.m. <laughs> if you've seen my previous video on food uh, in Korea, so make sure to make it to 8 p.m. So from both Gohan and Sabuk you can reach ski and resort by car. It's just seven minutes by car, so I remember. Or there is a free shuttle bus to ski resort. It's a very tricky one <laughs> because it just doesn't follow any schedule. It can appear 30 minutes before the schedule or 30 minutes later, but it's free and we took it every day. From both cities you can take them. And I also attach uh, the map uh, where the station is, so you could make it simpler for yourself and enjoy your vacations to the forest. 
slopes are the very best in this Haiwan ski resort, especially when it's crispy, snowy weather. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, slopes like a Korean cream, which is true. <laughs> Interesting thing about it's very slippery. Korean cream kind of helps you to ride your board very easily. <laughs> this resort is made of 18 slopes. Total area is 21 kilometer. It's a huge area with a very beautiful views of mountains. Mountains are everywhere. You can make it from one view to another view just all day long. You're never gonna get tired of the views because it's so beautiful. <laughs> the map of the ski resort seems pretty easy. Just like all the slopes go into the one in the end. The distances in the reality are very different. This resort is located on multiple mountains and you can easily go crazy once you start to ride one of the slopes. Make sure to check the signs on which slope you are. An easy one um, can easily become an advanced level once you turn to the right and not go to the left. <laughs> so check the signs. Uh, there is no way back up there, <laughs> only down. <laughs> the slopes are huge. They are very wide and very long. You make a few turns and think, oh, maybe right now it's gonna be a base and I'm gonna have a rest. No way, a few more turns. Oh, come on, it's not the, <laughs> it's not the bottom yet. <laughs> My legs pleased me to take a rest after each ride. Uh, should I mention again that people, even at ski resorts, they're so friendly and nice and kind. During four days straight, we were the only tourists we met at this ski resort. <laughs> we were kind of from another planet and when people looked at us, it's like, Oh my god, how these people made here? <laughs> they were surprised. So feel free to start a conversation, especially if you know some words in Korean. I promise you, people are gonna be very, very pleased. At least uh, you should know how to say hello in Korean. And you also, personnel at this uh, ski resort also super super nice i don't lie they smile a lot they slow down the chair lift or gondola just to let you enter this lift and sit comfortably people in line don't hit each other they don't rush just to take the chair lift as fast as they can everything goes very slowly and atmosphere in this resort is very, very nice and calm and smooth and very relaxing. Take a break, don't, <laughs> don't rush things. Not only they smile when you enter the chairlift, they wave you and say something in Korean. I think it's a safe instruction. They say it smiling and waving at you like Yay! Anyasa! Kamsabida! It was every time, I promise you, every time <laughs> we exit the chairlift. <laughs> there are two hubs in this ski resort. The bottom one is called the Valley Hub, and there is also one more, a bit higher. It's called Mountain Hub. It's absolutely the same thing. The hub contains three floors. It's connected with escalators. So on the first level, they have ski passes and changing rooms. On the second one, they also have changing rooms and exit to the slopes. And on the third one, they have a food court. Everything is under the roof in one place. You can comfortably change your clothes and your gear under the roof in a very warm, nice place. They do offer storage boxes for your gear for several days or for the whole season. You don't need to, to bring your gear back to your hotel or to your apartments or to your car. You can leave it there and it's going to be dry 
and nice and ready to ride whatever you want. Or you can also uh, fix your gear if you need to. You can buy gloves there, googles if you want, or maybe additional accessories just for safety thing. We uh, rented a very regular one box. <laughs> It was a very thin and vertical. We placed there two boards, two helmets, two pair of boots, googles and our gloves as well. It fit perfectly in one box. Uh, once you are set, you go up on the escalator which brings you to the beginning of the slopes. When it comes to bringing your own gear to this ski resort, it's completely up to you. We had uh, three flights uh, to reach this place with different uh, airlines and we decided not to bring our own gear. <laughs> we decided uh, to rent it at the ski resort at first. And it seems reasonable. You are here at the ski resort, you just grab an equipment and you go right. All the South Korea are up for safety. <laughs> And what it means here is that not only that the slopes are covered with nets, they are also very careful when it comes to gear. So they check it properly and they fix it right away if they found something. They can't let you rent the gear for the whole day at least. This resort works from 9 to 10 p.m. and they do have two hour break it's from 4 to 6 p.m. You can rent a gear from 1 until 4 p.m. Then you need to bring it back. And then you rent from 6 p.m. till the closing time. Which means you need to, <laughs> to take in the line twice a day to rent a gear. Rent it, bring it back for tea break. <laughs> rent it again and bring it back at the end of the day. If you're about to ride it every single day, it's super strange. <laughs> what you can do instead is to rent at those cities, Sabuk or Gohan. Sabuk has zero options of renting snowboarding or skiing gear. In Gohan instead, they have multiple of options. My plan was we wake up at Sabuk, having breakfast at some traditional place, then we go to a local bus, uh, reach Gokhan, which is about 15 minutes from Sabuk, rent the equipment and go to the shuttle bus to the ski resort, which is 15 minutes then. It was absolutely different from my imagination in a very good way. <laughs> I wanted to check that comment from TripAdvisor and this place it's called snowbank this one it's official review for this place it's not promotional but highly recommend to go directly to them so first of all they asked what we wanted we want snowboards <laughs> they offered us multiple versions of boots brought us boards as well they also can rent you a helmet we just uh, decided to take all of these at this place and the equipment was pretty good. We paid for five days straight. They take no deposit, no documents, so you just pay for the time that you use uh, the equipment, which is super interesting. <laughs> they speak English very poorly, prepare your Papago app. They can also sell you uh, ski passes, but wait, don't take them. I could tell you why a bit later. The prices are very reasonable and very nice uh, compared to skin resort. One guy asked us, uh, where is your car located? Uh, I want to help you to put the gear in your car. No, we, we don't have car. <laughs> well, uh, how are you about uh, uh, to reach that resort? Oh, you know, you have just a shuttle bus somewhere here. We are about to ride it and reach that place. And he said, Oh, no, 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 it, no way. <laughs> this station is located very, very far and it's not comfortable. <laughs> what should we do then? <laughs> uh, he took our boards and said, Oh, I have my car just parked near this shop and I can give you a ride to the ski resort. Wow, <laughs> wow. <laughs> 
Why are people so cute there? I, I don't know. <laughs> He just uh, placed all our boards and boots and helmets in his uh, very top-notch electric car and uh, gave us a ride to the ski resort. It was super pleasant and kind of him. Uh, we thanked him and just uh, were very, very happy to start riding. <laughs> very, very happy. <laughs> we had um, a few issues with equipment. Normally I write uh, as a, with my uh, right leg front. This stance uh, was on the left foot, which means I should write on the opposite side, which I can't do. <laughs> the second thing was uh, with um, attachment. That attachment does not keep the boot tight to the board, which is unsafe and, and useless if it doesn't do that. The last thing was so crazy, even mentioned about it. It was 30 degrees angle and it did not slide. My soulmate's board slides easily. Mine just stopped every <laughs> few centimeters. <laughs> All these issues, they were resolved in no time. We just uh, text uh, that guy without any further stupid questions. So why you did not check it before you rent it or you know, are you sure about this? He just asked, where are you? I will be there in 10 minutes. 10 minutes he was there. He made uh, to the ski resort three times for us, three times. He changed the stance. He brought additional two boards, two or three pairs of new boots just to try them on because I also had a problem with the boots. It was the very best, excellent service I ever experienced in my life. Where are you? Okay, I'll be there, no problem. He vexed our boards directly on the ski resort by hand. And my board finally started to slide <laughs> easily and so perfect. After all these issues, it was all in one day. It happened all in one day. <laughs> we were so exhausted. But the next day and the other days, we ride super nicely and easily and so good. If you are made it to Haiwan, you're gonna experience it on your own. This service is excellent and they're gonna make the best for you they can, for your best, safe and nice experience. Kamsabida, Snowbank! Prices and discounts for tourists. We checked, it's February 2024. Discounts for tourists exist! <laughs> Don't buy ski passes at rental shops if you're a tourist. You can make it even cheaper once you buy directly at the ski resort. 40% discount for foreigners. It's not promoted. You need to bring your own passport. When you're about to buy a ski pass, you can do this directly at Volley Hub or at the Mountain Hub. Just bring your passport, say you're a tourist and you want a 40% discount for ski pass. They have uh, ski passes for several hours, for the whole day and as a seasonal one. Get dressed, put on all of your gear, bring your board or skis and only then go to buy a ski pass with your passport. If you make to the ski resort by midday, you don't need to buy the whole day ski pass. You can buy seven or nine hours. They also have a two hour break from four to 6 p.m. Uh, these hours are not paid. They are made for fixing the slopes and bringing them back to the great conditions. So, for example, if you made it to a ski resort and get dressed by 1 p.m., you ride from 1 to 4 p.m. and then from 6 to 10 p.m. When it comes to seasonal ski passes, it's way more cheaper compared to daily ones. In this case, you need to make it directly into the volley hub inside on the first floor you need to leave your fingerprints and even there they can apply a 40 percent discount of 
as a foreigner if you bring your passport. At the beginning of every right day, you need to check your fingerprints and prove that it's you who are about to ride today with this ski pass. It's a personal one, okay? But it's very, very cheap. If you're a tourist, they gonna give you a lot of other discounts for for swimming pools or for some restaurants which are located in ski resort. So make sure to bring your passport every single day in order to get this discount and remind them to get it, okay? Now <laughs> about food. Let me make it clear that uh, all four restaurants uh, which are located on the ski resort, they are all the same. They have the same four main dishes. The same. First one, I remember it's a big steak with some pasta. It's sweet. What do you expect? It's sweet <laughs> and spicy. <laughs> the second one, it's a soup. And two other options I don't remember, but we checked all four restaurants and they offer absolutely the same menu. That's crazy. <laughs> we definitely survived there. Again, you can make it to the 24-7 convenience store. They have uh, two of them at the ski resort. You can buy sausage there or take a chicken. Make sure to take a hot coffee as I recommended uh, the food video. They also have a few nice options just uh, right at the slopes. You can try noodles. They also offer fish cakes, which are pancakes made of fish. Very delicious. And they have some very nice option uh, with um, soft, deep-fried balls with sweet, sweet cheese inside. <laughs> They're sweet people. Don't expect to eat the pretty good. Fast food definitely at the third floor of the Valley Hub or Mountain Hub. You can find a cheesecake at the same food court. Overall, honestly, I want to return back to the ski resort. The best time is uh, January or February when we brought snow with us and it was very nicely done the snowy weather. So this place is amazing. I highly recommend to try this ski resort if you want to try something new. I highly recommend to bring some salty food with you if you crave it salt so much as I do. I'm talking about this in all videos, but it's very true. And I put all the links uh, on the places um, I've been talking about in this video about where to stay, where to rent equipment, uh, where to eat if you struggle to find salty and um, delicious things. And yeah, just like this, I hope you really enjoyed these mysterious videos and if you tried uh, skiing or snowboarding in South Korea or you're about to try Share your comments uh, under this video. I would be very, very happy. See you next one. Kamsabida!